Hey, good afternoon, Isabi. Let me start by saying that I'm really glad to be back with you here. And I want to especially thank all the people who have been so loving and encouraging on the back end the past two weeks and who have ministered to me. Um, the Lord had me search my heart really, really deeply. And sometimes that's really difficult and even painful. So I'm coming out of that process. And um, what I'm going to do uh, today, I think, is to present two videos. First of the calendar, the second of the celestial signs, and what I believe is the spiritual application, the heart application of the information that I was led to study and share with you. So the scarlet thread speaks, of course, about the redemption that the Lord has woven into the scriptures, into the heavens on the red ecliptic, and into our own lives. And we see that marked out on the calendar this week, especially in the salvation of Rahab and her household. And that was at the end of the clashing of kingdoms, of the kingdom of God, com uh, being confronted with the kingdom of the enemy. And what I believe the Lord is showing me is that in our future steps and in the battles that we're going to be um, facing, that a deeper level of obedience, of humility, and the willingness to listen to Him and being ministered to um, is required. It was required of Joshua. It was required of David. Um, and it was required of Nehemiah, and all of them have markers on the calendar at the end of this week of a process of preparation starting and a new time frame of um, greater explorations in the Promised Land in their own personal inheritance starting. So before we go to the calendar of this week, I want to briefly go back to the calendar of last week because I didn't make a video uh, last week. But I'd like to share uh, how the uh, solar eclipse um, is connected to the upcoming uh, prenumeral lunar eclipse on second, on second Passover and um, how the march of Jericho started on IR1. So the new moon was sighted at the expected time. So there's no shifting uh, in the calendar uh, for the month of IR. And the uh, start of the new moon on the evening of Shabbat means that we have a Rosh Chodesh Shabbat. And that is when the new moon is sighted on the Sabbath. And that's when Isaiah 66 is read. And there is a beautiful promise embedded in that chapter. So I wholeheartedly recommend for you to read it. So let's go to the calendar for this week. And I'm not going to cover all the topics. I think uh, if you're led to, you can uh, pick up the calendar yourself uh, by clicking on the link uh, in the description box. And you can enlarge it because there's a lot of information crammed into a very tiny space. But what I was uh, desiring to do is to put all the uh, prophetic relevant information for the coming weeks um, in one image. So you have everything on hand. It's very easy to um, discern. And the scriptures will give you the opportunity to, if you're so led, to study it out yourself. And at the end of the article, I cite uh, some of the uh, sources and resources that I have used to uh, confirm this information. So you can vet the information yourself. And as, uh, as you are led, you can also take a deeper dive into some parts of the stories marked on the calendar. So we are under the Harp of David, the meteor shower in the constellation Lyra this week. And as soon as that harp starts, stops to play, a new meteor shower will open up. So the Lord is confirming the 
song he is singing over us and i believe it's also a type of the new song the redemption song of the first fruits because we are now in the onset of the people's barley harvest and i'm going to um, focus my attention pretty much on the end of this week and we see a convergence of uh, critical events i believe in scripture with the end of the march on jericho and the people ascending straight up the salvation of Rahab and her household. And at the same time, Nehemiah's walls were finished. The protective walls around Jerusalem were restored and he commissioned a watch on the wall. So that is a representation of the Holy Spirit's work in and through the bride. We have a likely marker of David being strengthened um, after his covenant with Jonathan, him being absent from the new moon banquet, which I now understand to mean that he was no longer the high-ranking military official in Saul's army. He became a fugitive. He had been given understanding of the evil intent of Saul toward his father, and that was confirmed to Jonathan by uh, receiving the hatred and vindictiveness of his father when he stood up for David. So after the new moon banquet, Jonathan and David depart, making a covenant. So they're able to harmonize these different kingdoms, the kingdom of David being anointed for um, to become king uh, in the future, while Saul, Jonathan's father, was also anointed in the present king, but he was not willing to submit to the Lord, and it came to a clash between Saul and David, and Jonathan was um, the uh, son of Saul and would be king, but he knew that the Lord had anointed David, and they were able to come to a covenant and to mutual submission. But David had to leave the life he led behind and the position and the relationship to his beautiful, dear brother, John, brother in the spirit, Jonathan. So they were an example of brotherly love right then and there. But he would seek the strengthening of the priests. I believe that was the end of the week when the showbread that he was being given was exchanged. And Jesus refers to that moment when he is walking through the grain fields and his disciples are hand-picking grain. And I believe that is also a marker of the start of the harvest, of the hand-picking of the first fruits. They were chastised by, chastised by the Pharisees. And that's when the Lord refers back to the moment that David petitioned for and was given the showbread, the sword that he used to slay Goliath, and that Ahimelech, the priest, had sought confirmation uh, of the Lord, if that was okay. So I believe David, from the moment that he severed the ties with his past life and his commission under Saul, um, was on a divine mission of the Lord. So a lot of people think that when David spoke to the priest that he was on a mission by the king that he was not forthright or even lying. But there is, I believe, a beautiful study included in uh, this article that appears to confirm that he was not lying, that Jonathan confirmed him as being on the mission of the Lord God himself. And he would operate just like Joshua in the priestly order of Melchizedek, and that would be confirmed later in his life. And his priestly strengthening, um, marked at the end of this week, uh, was the same unrobing and being commissioned by the Lord as what happened to Joshua. So we have the Jericho siege ending, Nehemiah's walls being finished, and the sun is aligned with the star Hamal, the brightest star in the head of Aries. And um, that is a very important marker in the scripture pertaining to the Lord's crucifixion. And um, 
we have a quarter moon type of division and the asteroid Ceres entering into Leo. And the asteroid Ceres is a type of the Lord as a grain offering. And Leo, of course, represents the line of the tribe of Judah, of Shiloh, but it's also a representation of the heavenly Jerusalem. And as Ceres is entering at the back legs of the lion, the moon is approaching the front of the constellation. So during the, over the course of this weekend, the moon will transition from Cancer in to Leo and align with the sickle, the head and the chest stars of Leo, which I believe is a picture of the start of the harvest. And of course, in scripture, because we've studied Esther in detail, the moment that the bride or the queen touches that scepter is also a pivotal moment of a uh, spiritual chapter change. And I expect our own uh, spiritual warfare over the course of this week to also amp up. Uh, so I've included resources to um, strengthen yourself in the spirit, uh, about the uh, spiritual armor of God, of warfare and repentance prayers. Um, so I hope that if you're not familiar with those, that you will read them and be strengthened in the Lord. So we see a picture of darkness encroaching as well. In the article, I explain why the wedding of William and Kate in 2011 was marked when the sun aligned with Hamal, they were acting out exactly mirroring what was happening in the heavens at the time. And why in the eyes of the elite, the days of the 29th of April, the 30th and March 1 are considered their uh, high days. Um, so you can uh, find more information in the article about the uh, importance to them of these days. In the time of Jesus, that was the marker of second Passover. So I think that marker to us is the most important one, maybe even the most important one on this entire calendar, because I believe that the second Passover next week, Friday, will be a bookend. Because if the Lord speaks of himself as the door, the blood atonement that we apply on our hearts and then on our lives is that open door. So the extension of second Passover was, of course, for those who were either ritually unclean or otherwise unable to partake in the first Passover because of them not being able to come like in the days of Hezekiah. And the attribute of those afar off of course, can also pertain to the Lord himself. So there are beautiful prophetic pictures in the celebration of second Passover. But I think it's especially important to consider that that could be the moment that the Lord speaks of that he is at the door and at a certain point in time that the door is going to close. Um, next week will also be the start of the days of Noah in the mirror month of chess fans. So we are now currently in on our calendar in the second month. And in his days, the arc days were uh, from the 10th to the 17th. In the second time, uh, uh, second Passover time frame, the 10th would also be, of course, the day of the lamb selection. And the uh, second Passover was to be celebrated just like the first Passover only there was not a feast of unleavened bread afterward. But the lamb selection, the spiritual cleansing of people, so it, it was under the same requirements. So we have these preparation days leading to second Passover. And the um, of course, the penumbral lunar eclipse is taking place on the day that the elite have marked for the crowning of Charles. And I understand that to be the formal end of the 70 years of Babylon under the rule of the queen. And I explain that in more detail in the article itself. So to sum it up, I believe that we are looking at the potential start of the people's barley harvest at the end of this week. And then the final preparations to a potential closing of a spiritual door 
on second Passover.